I wonder what kind of multiverse I would want to go into. I guess I, it would be fun to go to a multiverse where like you're a bad guy, like a, an absolute full on bad guy. And it was like one decision that turned you, like they say with the Joker, all it takes is one day. Doctor Strange back in a sequel. To be honest, I totally have forgotten everything about Doctor Strange. I personally went into this film not remembering anything from the original. I guess that's kind of the problem when you make a sequel to a film that came out freaking six years ago, but they did it. I was really hooked into wanting to watch this film purely because I knew that it was Sam Raimi directing the film. I love Sam Raimi films, the original Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire, they're some of my favorites. One of the things I really wanted from this film was just more of a darker tone and this film kind of gave me that but yeah, Marvel's version of dark. Having said that, the trailers for this film did an amazing job of making me really intrigued. This film gave me a really good villain. I felt like the villain of this film didn't have that weak kind of generic ass backstory of Marvel superhero films. None of that shit of like, oh my God, he's a sorcerer. I wanted to be the sorcerer. Now I'm going to swear a vendetta against you for the rest of the f***ing movie franchise. I love it when a villain is not someone just set up to be vanquished for one movie, you know? I love it when they use a character that's been developed for a long period of time. And with a cinematic universe like Marvel has done, it's always good to see them just bring someone to the fray. Someone that they've planted seeds with for a long time. And that's what we get here. Now, for those that don't know, the plot involves America Chavez. She is pretty much the John Connor of this film. She's got the power to jump multiverses. She doesn't know how to control it. And she's essentially useless for the whole film. But she has this power. The villain wants this power for themselves. And so, whammo. She comes to Strange for help and they have to kind of team up, work out how to use the multiverses and take down the villain. This film just does one thing that I really don't like is it introduces plot devices. So we've got America Chavez, who is the typical John Connor, where someone is the key to something. I personally don't like that and I'm sick of seeing that. Maybe it's because I've seen five Terminator sequels. Ah, it's been done to death. Having said that, there's some awesome visual effects in this film. There's a fight scene between Doctor Strange and an an evil Doctor Strange and it was really fun and cool. Normally it would feel like it's just superheroes throwing projectiles at each other, but in this they did something different. So that was cool. They bring back Rachel McAdams' character. She was the love interest of that movie and then they bring her back here. Whether or not she's actually necessary to the plot, different story, but it's always nice to see Rachel McAdams. She's fucking awesome in everything she's in, so. I'm always welcoming some more Rachel McAdams. Elizabeth Olsen destroys this movie. Like she is incredible in this film. She takes what on paper sounds like a weak as f backstory, a weak as motive for what she wants. And she makes it somehow believable. I feel overall the, the actors in this film did an incredible job with not being given a lot as far as the writing goes, you know? The writing is kind of just meh. A lot of people I know, whenever I asked them, what did you think of Doctor Strange? The usual response was, yeah. I don't think it's that bad. In fact, I think this would be one of the better films, like out of the last couple of years of Marvel films. One thing I will say that is a major pet peeve for me, you go from these films where hundreds of superheroes are fighting one common enemy, and now it's like we go back to one hero fighting one villain. Like you just feel like that hero could just have called a bunch of superhero friends and been like, hey, let's take down this dude. And it would have been all sweet. But because of their ego, they don't. It's weird going back to those type of movies after seeing so many superhero team ups. Other things I really enjoyed. I love all the Sam Raimi Easter eggs and nods and references. Anyone who's a big fan of Sam Raimi, I feel they're gonna be kind of disappointed in that this film doesn't have that unique voice that Sam Raimi has that you felt in other films like Dark Man and Army of Darkness. Evil Dead 2. I don't get it here, you know? It just feels kind of filtered and... I love Sam Raimi, but 
in all honesty, anyone could have made this film other than those Easter eggs and references, you know. We've got the old car that's been in every single Sam Raimi movie. Bruce Campbell is back. I love Bruce Campbell, so it's always fun to see. This film did some cool stuff as well with the multiverse jumping where it brings characters that we've seen in other films, Marvel superheroes that we've never seen all together in a mishmash, and even characters that have been done before but played by other actors, which was cool, especially if you really don't like some of those actors like I do. <laughs> it's quite obvious who I'm talking about. One thing though, I just feel like, you know, everything everywhere all at once did everything this film did so much better on a smaller budget with less shit to care about or worry about or keep up with. Like I didn't watch WandaVision, so I felt kind of left out. I felt like I was in the dark for a fair bit of the film. Then I had to ask other people, you know, did what happened in WandaVision, I don't personally have time to watch all those Marvel shows. So I can cover movies, but not shows, you know, like that takes too much time. I felt like this film did an okay job, I guess, of letting you know a little bit of what happened in WandaVision without having to spell out the entire picture. Having said that, there were times when I felt like, okay, I really should have watched WandaVision before I watched this movie. But then other friends were telling me that they watched WandaVision and they really didn't like what they did in this film. They said that they retconned whatever happened in WandaVision. I don't like the idea that I had to watch an entire show to understand one movie. It's like, we already have to watch so many damn movies to know what's going on in, in these Marvel Cinematic movies. But you add shows on top of that, that's hours and hours of stuff you gotta keep on top of. It's really hard. Whereas everything, everywhere, all at once had this central message that kind of grounded you in what was going on. So even when shit was just flying all over the place, utter chaos, you came back to the central task of what they want to do, what they want to achieve, and why the characters want it so bad. In this film, I didn't really understand what Doctor Strange needed to learn. And if there was a lesson that he needed to learn, it was something he already learned from No Way Home. I just feel like this film didn't really deliver on the premise of the multiverse. You know that Family Guy episode when they like, change and they go into all these different worlds and they're full explaining like, oh, this world is like a universe where religion doesn't exist. What about all the Renaissance art that Christianity inspired? Or what if Hitler was killed in World War II? They set up all these unique kind of worlds. In this, they kind of just go into one world and that's kind of the majority of the thing. They have this one cool shot where America Chavez and Doctor Strange are kind of like flying across all the different universes, which is a mad shot. But you're kind of like, uh, is that it? It sucks for a movie called Multiverse of Madness, but there's also a lot of story and crap going on, so you kind of understand why they didn't. This film just does the cardinal sin of what I feel a lot of films do these days, where their third act just goes way too long. Like, I know where the film is going, I know what you are doing, but just get there quicker. By the end of this movie, I tried recording a podcast where I, my podcast to review this film, and I was so dead tired. I had to listen back to the recording and I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. I don't know what it is about this film, but I was f***ing drained by the end of it. I think it's a case of just too much happening. This film is like two things that have already happened being rehashed. WandaVision with Wanda, you know, going through her whole lesson that she needs to learn about grief and how to handle her grief and all the shit that happened with WandaVision. So you got her with her lesson that she needs to learn, but then you got Strange. It's like, okay, he's looking after, kind of guiding this young uh, character who doesn't know how to use their power and is a bit immature, doesn't really understand what it's like to be a superhero yet, all that stuff. Yeah, that's kind of just Spider-Man No Way Home. And it was already done, like it came out only a couple of months ago. The other thing is this film will introduce plot devices and there's always a f***ing workaround, whatever it is. Okay, uh, this character's bad. Why are they doing this? Because there's a bad book. Well, what do we do? We got to destroy the bad book. All right, we destroyed the bad book. 
Oh wait, but there's another copy of the bad book. We need to find the good book, the antithesis of the bad book. Oh, where's the, where's the good book? Oh no, it got burnt. Now what do we do? Oh, it's okay guys, we can find this temple where they transcribed the good book, you know? Just a lot of that shit. And like, every time you think that they're f a, a magical loophole comes out of nowhere. Even in these type of movies, I'll take it to a degree, but you gotta, it can't just be pulled out of nothing. It's gotta come from somewhere. There's gotta be seeds planted. I would give Doctor Strange a three and a half out of five. Doctor Strange is pretty much like that fun summer movie that you kind of have to switch off your brain for. But then there's times when you do have to switch it on to follow what the hell's going on. And then you realize, I don't know anything that's gone on. Actors like Elizabeth Olsen and Benedict Cumberbatch and Rachel McAdams just have this really difficult task in that they have to make the writing in this film work. And power to them, they do. Especially Elizabeth Olsen. But it can only do so much, you know? You kind of think to yourself, oh, if only the script was just a little bit more refined. Multiverse of Madness is fun, popcorn. Rest assured, it's not a horror film. Decent, you know, like a slightly above average, especially considering phase four, you know, with superhero fatigue, it's hard to really be involved and kind of care about these movies anymore. It would be nice to see more risks, but at least tonally, it's like, it's a little bit different, but not really. It still feels safe. It's a shame that like, even with a director like Sam Raimi, it's still, doesn't have that unique style. And that's when it comes down to that Marvel just compromises each director's views and, and voices and they all just sound the same, which is a shame because that really is the reason that I got hooked in and was intrigued into watching Strange. What did you guys think of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? Did you think that it was gonna be a horror film? Did you think it was gonna be really different? Did you like the cliffhanger? Are you still pumped about phase four? And if you did watch WandaVision, did you feel like this film did you a disservice or it did help and you did appreciate this film because you watched WandaVision? Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Take care, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna go to a multiverse where I'm not drained. <laughs>